everybody, welcome back. This is Excel video 442 and I'm Nate Moore. I just booked another speaking engagement to speak for State MGMA Society this year. If I haven't spoken to your organization lately, I'd love to. What I want to do today is tweak the recommended chart that we built in the last Excel video. And the way I want to start this is if I click on the chart, you'll notice this plus, this paintbrush, and this filter. These are new menus or new ways to interact with the chart in Excel 2013. So that's where I'm going to start as we go through the Excel 2013 charts with these new menus. If I hover over the plus, you'll see the plus will let me change chart elements. And what Excel means by chart elements is things like the axes and the titles and the grid lines and stuff like that. Obviously, I can turn them off, and that may be the best way to see that January and February and these numbers from 0 to 800,000 represent my axes. I can also click on this arrow and get primary horizontal and turn that off if I ever needed to, or primary vertical. Almost always leave both of those on, but the real point of this Excel video is here in more options. When you go to more options, you get a bunch of different ways to tweak the axes, and you'll notice what I have here, if I click on this drop down here, is I've got the horizontal axis, so we're going to play with this one. One way to get at this in the new way in Excel 2013 is to do this. If I wanted, here let's close this. If I wanted to get at it a different way, I can always right click here and get format axis and that will bring me back to the same place. So if you're used to the right click, that still works, that's fine. If you're not used to the right click, you might learn this plus as a way to navigate around your chart. So here are the axis options. The big one is here under, and, and this is the one that's by default taking me to axis options. This is the one we're going to play with today. We'll play with all the others in the next Excel video. So under Access Options, what you can do is you can change the bounds or the, the range of the axis. You'll notice now because I clicked on the Y axis, that's what I have here. So if I said, hey, I want this to start at, let's say, 250,000 for whatever reason, I could do that and I could make the maximum, let's go here, a million. And so now it goes up to a million. And I say, well, you know, I don't like the way these units are going here. Maybe I want something different here. What you can do is change the major and the minor units. The major ones are what's dis displayed. And if I wanted fewer lines, let's say I wanted to make this every 200,000. And if I hit enter there, you can see these change. And you'll see because I'm starting at 250, every 200,000, 450, 650, 850. And if I change this to 200,000, now I go 200, 400, 600, 800. See how they're related? The minimum and maximum amounts on the y-axis, usually you want the minimum to be zero. It's kind of deceptive because the assumption is on most of these charts that it's going to start at zero. So usually I'll make this zero. But if you need to change it, you can. And you can change the maximum, the major units. The minor units are lines you can add in between these major grid lines, and I can show you how to do that in a later Excel video. For the time being, they're off, and I'm fine with leaving it there. Horizontal axis crosses. This is where we had before. We could make the minimum negative a million for some really strange reason, and you can force where this horizontal axis crosses. Just for fun, I'm going to make this negative 500,000, and then... So there's that, and what I can do is I can make the horizontal axis cross at 200,000 if I needed to. Again, 9 times out of 10, I don't need to make this work. 9 times out of 10, this is 0, and automatic works for me, and it goes. But if you need to tweak it, while we're talking about axis options, those are some things to do. You can put the values in reverse order if it's like golf and you want to to have a low score instead of a high score or something like that. That all works. You can display the units if you want to. And again, you know, January and February works for me. This is dollars. That works for me. I probably don't need that. And I think that's what I want to show you on the y-axis. That, that, I want to show you one more thing on the x-axis over here. If I click on this axis, and one way to do it is here. Another way to do it is from here. What we can do is we can select the horizontal axis, and then let's come here to axis options. There we go. So the x-axis here has the same bounds and units and vertical axis crosses and axis position, all that kind of stuff. The thing I want to show you is the difference between automatically select based on data 
text axis, and date axis. Normally, you're fine with this. And you can see January and February. Watch what happens if I come over here and I change from February 15. Let's just make this September of 15. Notice how my chart goes January, February, March, April. And it shows me I have no data between February and August. Normally, that's the way you want it. So I can come over here and let's click on the horizontal axis and come over here to axis options. If I change this, the automatic Excel looks at it and says that's a date. If I click date here, I'm going to get the same date based option here. But if I click text, look at the difference. If I tell Excel this is text, I get it January and September without the gap when Excel is expecting to see dates because it recognizes this is a date and that's a date and I've got gaps in between. If that bothers you, you've got a strange date rotation. You do something every five months or something like that and you only want to show the actual values, treat it, the dates as text and you'll have January and September there. On the other hand, it can be a little bit deceptive to have January and September when you think they'd be back to back months or years. And so normally you'd want to do it that way. That's what I want to show you about the basics, the fundamentals of y-axis and x-axis. Notice that the horizontal axis is the one that lets me tweak the axis type based on text versus date. Stay tuned. Next time we'll work through the other options related to changing the horizontal and the vertical axis. Thanks for watching.